So my next thing, if he's not going to be a part of it, do I register, do I submit the song with his voice on it to be copyrighted? Or do, let's say, I sing it or one of the songwriters sing it and then copyright it without his voice? Or, you know what I'm saying? You know, this is a good question because I just encountered a situation like this last, a few days ago with one of the producers that I work with. Um, we had this girl, we wrote a song for her and he made the beat. So we literally wrote, wrote it and she really was just performing a cover of our songs, but we made it for her. So, yeah. so we sent them the song and um, she rapped it and she, she recorded it at, on her laptop. So the fact that she recorded the sound recording on her laptop, she owned the copyright of that sound recording, but we own the publishing of it. So a lot of times like you want to be when someone is when someone is recording your song or your lyrics, you want them to you want to be in control of the recording also, um, because yeah. the recording itself, um, that's known as a master. It's the master recording. So the fact that the girl, even though we wrote the song and we produced it and we was the we were the owners of the composition, we wasn't the owner of the copyright we wasn't the owner of the audio and it's weird i know if, i know i know like people probably like what are you talking about but yeah we weren't <laughs> we weren't the owner so so this shit was at like 1.5 million views it was on the, nah, it was like 2 million views so oh, really? all of a sudden all of a sudden we get a takedown notice and it, the takedown notice hit my guy's channel he got two strikes from it because they struck the beat and they struck the, the, the song. And he's like, damn, they're going to strike the beat. I made the beat. So I told him to file a, I told him to file a, um, a counterclaim because this is this was BS. But the fact of the matter is, he, we didn't record that rap that she did. She did that on her laptop. So she owned that she owned that master recording. So she had the right to say, take that down. That's my copyrighted recording even though we would have owned we wrote the song and we would have published this and we own the copyright to the composition of the song. You get what but I'm not saying? not the audio. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It became a whole nother copyright once she recorded on it. It became a whole new work of art. So, and she owned it, even though there was a split involved that was unnegotiated. You know what I'm saying? I see. So, so if he records that vocal... Because we're doing it because I have a studio here and I try to do as much as I can on my own. Yeah. Just to, just to save costs to on a major, like an actual studio. Yeah. So I usually just, um, so in the studio, he cuts vocals and the studio has his vocals. Does that mean I own the sound recording with his vocals on it? Do you have the files? Do you, like when you leave the studio, do you take the sound recordings? No. I have what I like. I, I have like my guitar track. I have my buddy's keyboards, the bass. And then I, I send them to the studio. And then whatever we do there, then they have like, let's say like they do drums and vocals. I don't have those audio checks. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a split. Yeah. Y'all yep. are spl splitting up. Well. Or would it be smart to do like once it's finished, I ask him for the stems. So I can own. Yeah, you want to have the master recordings, but see, that could that could you want to own those master recordings? Um, and when you sign off these agreements, it, it, that's why it's best if you just record in your studio because see now it's it's kind of an area where I'm really not. It gets real technical, copyright. It gets real technical, and I'm not a copyright lawyer, but I'm yeah. assuming. I'm assuming like, well, not, this isn't, a, I'm thinking you want to be recording your studio whenever possible. And you want to be, have, be the only one with those files. You really want to be the only one. You don't want nobody else with those stems because they have the masters. So then they say kind of like, well, I'm the owner of the masters. They have the physical um, master. It's like, they got the keys to the car. It's like, yeah. You wouldn't leave your keys to your car, the keys to your house at the studio. You're going to be like, oh, well, thanks for the session. Have we had a good one? Bye, guys. I'm taking my keys with me. 
you know, it's the same thing yeah. because now someone got the keys to your house. So now they can come in whenever they want. They go, well, I own this too. This is my house too. This is my car. I got the keys. What do you mean? This is my car. I got the keys, you know? So it, it, it becomes like the situation like that. So I'm, and I, and in hindsight, I remember like working with some producers and they wouldn't let you take nothing out the studio. It would be. That's what I was going to tell you. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it wouldn't leave. I was, was going to be like, I was like, you think that this guy is cool right now, but you think his demeanor would probably change? I'm like, hey, yeah. all those stamps, I want them. A million. You know? uh, 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 I'm telling you, money changes everything. Money is going to change yeah. everything. So don't think for a second. The minute money is in people's, you start seeing who's who. And I want to give people the benefit of the doubt and assume that everyone's going to do the right thing. And y'all just going to just live happily ever after. But you know, yeah. they see, you know, the same money is the root of all evil. So, you know, um, let's just hope you, you're around people that are, you know, they have scruples. They're, they're not unscrupulous people. But the reality is, if you don't have the paperwork together, it's going to become a debate. It's going to, it, 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 publishing is a debate. It's a debate. And that's why a lot of times the artists, they don't, they don't, they want their managers to work amongst each other because they don't want to ruin their relationships with the other artists. Because now we are talking about, oh, I'm going to split this up this way, this way. Let the managers argue that out because um, it could get ugly, you know, when someone feels yeah. like what they're entitled to and, oh, you didn't do shit, I did more than this. You know, anytime you're splitting things up, money, greed, and, you know, people feel like you owe them or they, it just gets, it just gets real ugly. So, um, yeah, my advice is always control the master. Always control so the master. How, how would it be if he does send me the stems, but they're basically copies, he got you the, know? You got to copy the keys to your car. You got to copy the keys to your house. And that's what I mean, two no, people, does that mean two people own the master? Pretty much, unless you get something in writing that says, I own this 100%. And you know, I own this. So, I mean, even if you had a copy, you own the master and you could like take it, get it shut down. You owned it. You got paperwork documentation. Um, so yeah, and that's something like you said, like do it in the beginning before it's like prolonged. Yeah. And, like kind of feels like you're blindsided. And I was like, Oh, by the way, like these are my masters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Before it looked me that low as you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. So everything's just paperwork. <laughs> paperwork is business. Percentages. <laughs> yeah business. that's crazy this is the part yeah. no one wants to do this is the part this is, and they don't you know i i swear like my position it's it's it, the manager is one of the most underappreciated jobs i've ever had man like i've never done so much work for somebody invested my time and my life and everything my car my my family everything for a person and then and then not get any recognition and get the short end of the stick um, a lot of work behind the scenes that get involved. A lot of um, talking back and it's just just a lot, man. Just a lot, man. But yeah, yeah. Control, I, I see that now. Yeah, <laughs> control your copyrights. Control your masters. Um, get your split sheets early, and if you and if you can, have someone else do the negotiation for you, so you don't seem like the bad guy. Just say, hey, I'm, you know, as a act like you got a fake manager, just to kind of avoid confrontation when possible. Um, sometimes that's the best way to do it. Have someone else call, like, "Hey, how you doing? This is um, uh, you know, I'm representing him, and you know, um, shit, we wanted to figure out how much how we gonna split this song up because we plan on you know sending this out. Just want to make sure everybody gets their fair share, you know. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's understandable. Okay, well, we got this agreement together, and um, I'll send it out to your email, and you know, you just got to sign and it says you you contributed this much, and if everything looks all right, then just send it back to us. And a lot of times, you could do all of this digitally. You don't have to see these people in person. Like um, I use like DocuSign. There's like a lot of um, companies that like you could sign up for to do digital signatures, where you could just send it to someone's phone, and they could just sign it on their phone. And a lot of times, that's the best way to do it because it's easy. It's real transparent. They can see it. You don't have to be up in someone's face. A lot of times when you bring a piece of paper to somebody, the sign is kind of like, it's kind of standoffish. It's kind of scary. Um, it kind of <laughs> catches catch people off guard and they're, oh, and then they, then they want to, 
then they want to turn into a detective. Oh, let me, I'm going to have to take this to my lawyer. <laughs> so he can look yeah. over it. <laughs> I'm my lawyer. And they don't got a lawyer. But as they should, they should take it to someone and to look over it. But, you know, a lot of times you send it to people like that. They just get all snobby. So, like, I like to do the um, the DocuSign because it's, it's your phone. It's private. It came to your phone. It's personal. You can just sign it. You don't have to. You know, you don't have to think of it, but paper paperwork always scares people. I know it's yeah. like paperwork scares people. So and then feel the pressure of them just looking at you like, oh, you're gonna sign it already. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. And you want to give people time to sign. Like you don't want to, you just send it. I sent it to your email. Did you get it? Okay, well, all right, we'll sign that when you get a chance. You know, it's just more comfortable. I like the, I like using DocuSign. Is that a like a monthly thing you have to do, or is it like free? You just make a document on there and uh, send it off. They got monthly. I mean, if you if you're sending out a lot of documents, you get a paid subscription. But I think like you could do like a free month, and you could send off like ten documents in that month. But I mean, if you plan on using it, they got like a thirty dollars a month uh, subscription, and you can just sign up for one month or two months and then cancel it. You know, like if you send a bunch yeah. of documents that month, and yeah, they got a few a few ones that are free. Um, I think Adobe has one, like a, Adobe Sign and Scan or something to send documents to people. And so it's a few of those services. So yeah, I recommend using those because it just makes it more. It just makes it easier. Um, people are used to just getting digital stuff nowadays, so you know.